Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Whose Fault Is It Anyways? Today we are looking at a Crusader 70 minute long game. We got a lot to go through. Dazzle here being blamed by most of his team for this loss. The carry pinging him constantly, but not communicating what he can do better. Well, that's where we step in. Let's find out whose fault is it? You're warding your general decision making. You are placing observers and sentries, but... I feel there is a lack of deeper thought on why you're doing it. So we're going to start here pretty early on. You're going to place a sentry here. I never understand these. I don't know what you're looking for because apparently you're looking for the Nyx who blocked his own hard camp and you're going to open it up for him. Interesting. Interesting. After that, after he knows you put a sentry here, you then put an observer here like things are strange here but any any time people have their sentries killed they almost always bring sentries back potentially to block their own hard camp again it's usually the other way it's usually you block the camp kill his sentry that is here opening up the camp and then you would place this observer, which would be bad because when they come to place another sentry to open up their own camp the way it's supposed to go, they would then get a free observer. So you really shouldn't do this. About a minute later, here comes Nyx, drops the sentry, kills that sentry, and then, oh, look at that observer. Had no idea it was here, but just happened to get it. You're gonna come back, take his sentry. Why? I don't know. OD comes over, you guys get a kill, you got freedom to ward wherever you want, and we're gonna put it in the same spot in the same spot where we just we just lost one this time you put it a little further out but again someone opening up their camp in this area would get this observer now fortunately you guys are fighting for sentry control in this area where there's not any invis yet because neither of these heroes are six so we're sentry warring over nothing. So in this case, you're probably okay, but in general, this is not a good spot. You should move it further out, especially after you lost one here already. As a rule of thumb, once you lose an observer in a given spot, never place another observer there again for the rest of the game. People are creatures of habit in Dota, especially in ranks like Crusader, and they will just keep checking the exact same spots and keep putting observers in the exact same spots. You try to be sneaky, you put an observer here, they find it. Never use it again, unless a team fight breaks out, you need vision, that's totally fine. But when you're just trying to get your observer to survive do not place it here again mix it up come place it somewhere over here somewhere over here things like that because the enemy team is very likely to just keep putting sentries here They're like oh i found an observer before i'm just gonna like maybe another one will show up here and if you keep putting them in the exact same spots then yes they do keep showing up and the enemy keeps getting free money why are you even warding here at 12 minutes and 50 seconds right all your towers are up all your observers are in the top half of the map which means your team can't see anything else you don't need vision in this area. Now you're coming over here, you're gonna place an observer here. Look at our observer coverage. We see this triangle amazingly and nothing else on the map. This observer, oh, it's gonna protect people in the jungle. So is this observer and this observer. You're overkilling in the exact same spot. This observer is kind of weird. Like I get it, maybe we're defending this. So like there's kind of some value here. But I mean, if we look at our observer vision on the mini map, like, okay, we see this area, which, like, how much do we think we're playing in this area with Ricky OD, like, farming Ancients a bunch? Not really. And then, like, okay, we have these. Like, this one's fine-ish, but, like, there's nothing in this area. You're not really giving much vision to see when Elsie is, like, running to gank people, where Nyx might be popping invis back here, right? You're not gonna, like, this is not gonna spot a Nyx invis because he's already invis at this point. So you need some deep vision so that one, you can spot the pickoff heroes starting to move to certain areas and you can react in time and not like literally see them here and then they blink initiate you. And like Ricky has pickoff targets with his defusal. He sees a low health hero over here. He knows to come over and kill them. When you don't have any deep vision, you're severely limiting your ability to play the map. And for whatever reason, Nyx is gonna come over, place an observer first, then his sentry, find yours, kill it. Should have put the sentry first, observer somewhere else instead of the most common cliff look look at all the observers in this game right now they're all on cliffs and now undying's gonna come over d ward this stuff hey guys we know they have vision here let's put another one and for good measure an observer as well yet another cliff ward how about another cliff ward up here and despite cliff wards being extremely common in this rank we don't put a sentry first to see if they have a cliff ward here you're gonna come place another extremely defensive cliff ward 
And it's such a common spot that just 40 seconds later, Crystal Main's gonna come and kill your Observer Ward and place her own. So common that now Undying's gonna come over and remove their vision here. And I'm confident you guys would place another one here if you had one, except your spot was occupied, so you ended up putting yours over here. Don't worry, guys. Fresh Observer Ward just came into stock. Gonna put it here. Observers are known to need friends. Gonna keep them close together. Uh-oh, my favorite cliff doesn't have an Observer. Time to see if the same cliff I dewarded twice has a third one. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Three D wards on the exact same. Oh my god. My cliff doesn't have an observer. This one's kind of fine because a fight was breaking out, but it was really bad of you to walk in here. They just dewarded your favorite cliff where they also keep putting observers. So you are walking into an area there's very likely to be vision, which actually in this case there wasn't. It was a blind find by LC, but there's a very high risk that the enemy had observers here because you keep putting observers here. So you got to look into that. You got to self-reflect and realize, I keep putting observers here because they keep putting observers here because I keep putting observers here. So if I walk into this area and they have multiple pickoffs, there is a very high chance it is dangerous. You need to understand that your job as Dazzle is to think about Grave first. Like if you're not thinking about that, you could have picked any other hero. This is your unique element, Grave. So when you walk up like this, this is completely throwing out the entire point of the pick out the window, why don't I go walk in first and engage the Medusa versus a Legion Commander? Now in this particular game, you do have another save in the Astral from OD, but why should he have to Astral save you because you've chosen to walk up with your massive amount of cast range, allowing you to stay super far in the back, out of sight to not be killed. Instead, you're gonna walk up, reveal yourself to the enemy team so that Legion can then choose to duel someone else. You are not being punished for your mistakes currently, but I promise you, if you like gain a little bit of MMR and then drop and you're like, man, 450%, I'm not saying that's you, but people would do that, right? It's because you're making a terrible mistake, not being punished for it, possibly winning. You go up a little bit and then people go, hmm, that Dazzle hero, the really important hero I should kill, he's walking up to the front of the team fight in front of a tide hunter and an undying. I guess I'll kill the Dazzle who saves other people but cannot save himself if we duel him, I guess we'll kill him first. Again, I know OD is unique in this situation, but why is LC dueling when two save heroes are next to each other? I don't know. I don't have the answers to these kind of mysteries, but I'm just saying the higher up you go, you're not going to see whatever this is. Oh my God, a grave, how, who, who could have seen that coming, guys? You guys just killed Medusa, now would be a good time to push aggressively and get on their half of the map, but you're gonna place your one observer here. That means when you get up to here, it'd be great to have vision over here, over here, or just put it uh, like a more sneaky one somewhere so that throughout the game you'll have deep wards, uh, but now you don't. You put your one sentry over here. You find a sentry, kind of cool, but now you're trying to push up to this tower. There's an invis Nix. He could be looking around, you have no idea. Super dangerous, and you're gonna make it even more so dangerous by being here you're in their vision, like attacking things, casting spells, like you're showing yourself a high priority target. You are revealing yourself. Nick's still going to choose to jump this undying instead for whatever reason. So great on you to grave. I'd like to point out though, that this is the cast range of grave when you have Aether Lens and Psychic Headband. So you do not need to be this close to the undying actively attacking things that he's attacking. You can be behind these trees. You could be on this high ground with observers helping to protect you. Sentries like over here, right? You could be like back here. If you built like a blink or a four staff, jump in as you're needed. With that blink, you'd be here, grave, blink away. Because once you reveal yourself, there is another hero who is interested in killing you. It's the Legion Commander. So she is just waiting to find you. That's why if you can be really far back, even when you cast Grave, she still does not know where you are to jump you. Again, fortunately, you have an OD, but this is more of a mistake from the enemy team. Nyx should have killed you. She should have dueled OD. And this guy certainly didn't build a shard to save either of you. He's only building for himself. So then both of you would be dead and you would have thrown back some kills to the enemy team. Your team just took Roshan. You got the ages. You guys want to push up. All of that is fine. You are leading the way. You are in front of Undying. You are in front of Tidehunter, in front of Ricky. 
all of these heroes who have more survivability than you. You are the save hero. You should be back here behind all of them. This guy has a gem to scout out the Nyx and stuff. You are leading the way into where the enemy might have defensive vision and then just instantly kill you. You're going to like sneak your way in here with the glimmer cape, right? They got a sentry. So they see you doing this. They should see that your team is completely split off from you and you could be killed right now. No reaction from your team is even possible because they're all over here. Terrible positioning, unpunished right now. You guys take the tier two tower, now gonna go for the high ground. This is not easy for you guys because you just don't have the best tower hitters, but it is a pretty farmed Ricky at this point, 200, 50-ish damage, right? Like, he will whittle this tower down. He has the Aegis, has a Lincolns, has some mobility spells. He has Grave, Astral behind him. Undying now has a Shard from a Tormentor, so he has a save. He has Counter Initiate from Tide Under. So just send the Ricky in to hit the tower. Or you have an OD with Meteor Hammer, also has Lincoln, so he can stand like outside the tower, keep casting Meteor Hammer if they jump OD. They have, again, the Dazzle save, the Undying save, the Counter Initiate. You even have like Ricky Smokescreen, you can drop that. It'll be a slow siege to whittle down this tower. And as long as you have Observers and Sentries set up, Observers and Sentries set up, then Nyx cannot just walk in and find you guys, right? It'll be slow, but it will be fairly safe and doable. Or we can blink ravage the Medusa. We're gonna slow things down here. We have a lot to break down. We're gonna blink ravage the Medusa when we don't know where the rest of the enemy team is because we don't have any observers or sentries because we placed them back here, which actually this spot is not that bad, but it would be nice to have a second set of observers and sentries so that we could find heroes like LC. And uh, you know, if we had any extra observers that we didn't need to place somewhere else on the map, we could do that. We could place it up here as we decide to commit onto Medusa, the tankiest hero on the enemy team, the Medusa who has LC save behind her. There's AOE stuns as the entire team starts running up here. We're going to blink, ravage, engage on the Medusa as the tower is almost about to die. We're going to engage the Medusa. We're going to refresh her, ravage a second time onto the Medusa. Ricky's going to jump on, start attacking. Okay, since we're in, we're in. Let's commit the Disperser, the powerful slow that prevents heroes from moving quickly. The guy that's stunned and can't move... Let's activate the Disperser now. Okay, we're gonna keep all committing onto the Medusa. Fortunately, press the attack, nowhere to be seen. Legion just chilling in the back. Lena, no one looking at her, pops BKB. Oh shit, BKB. All right, back to the Medusa. We're all going to throw everything at the Medusa. Basher commits Abyssal. There's a bit of overlap here, whatever. Let's just keep throwing everything on this Medusa. We burn all of Medusa's mana, the hardest part about killing Medusa, all 3,000 mana now gone from the Medusa. She's going to disperse her herself because fortunately there's no other slow from any of our teammates potentially that could counteract this. She's now running away. The Medusa, who we've burned 3,000 mana off of, committed everything we had on that Medusa. Let's pivot. Let's pivot over to the Lena, the BKB Lena. Let's now all look at Lena and hit her and let the Medusa, who we decided to throw everything against, let's just turn away from her. Okay, now let's look to Lena. Oh, look, look at that. Legion's now in here. She's gonna duel OD. Why? Why can she duel OD? Because he's back here being saved by her? No, because we're over here hitting things. The creeps doing what you guys need to do. They're staying focused. They took the tower for you guys. You do get the grave on the OD, great. High damage output Tidehunter offlane. He's trying to chase Medusa on his own over here. All the auras and things he has to contribute to the fight. First of all, pass the gem off to someone else. Put this, put this uh, Vlad's offering in here. All those auras, not relevant anyways, because he's nowhere near his team. He's like chasing to the fountain, so. Uh, you guys kind of living right now, believe it or not, Tidehunter eventually killed for his transgressions of going that deep. You guys could back out now. You took the tier three. You got some kills. This was not the cleanest fight, but you kind of did stuff. Are we going to do that? No, we're going to stay too long. People are going to die. 
you are going to have a hard time graving. This is where we rephrase, Dazzle's not saving me, which, uh, I mean, you could try. You could be, like, up here trying to grave this far. You definitely could. You're, like, way too far back. You're focused on the OD. I get it. This is the hard part about playing Dazzle. You really do have to, like, look around. And I did notice from your perspective, your camera work often could use a little bit of work. You need to not see, like, what's going around you, but see further on of like other things that are happening it would help you out a lot but i know that's easier said than done not gonna worry about it too much because it's a crusader it's not that crazy that uh that's something you got to work on you guys could still leave at any moment but you're staying around too long and believe it or not you cannot save people forever so eventually you guys kind of lose this fight when you lose a fight like that you should absolutely just avoid the enemy team split push other lanes this is where if you had observers downs throughout the map it would be useful to know where they are but when you don't have vision you all have to be careful do you think you should be trying to engage medusa when there is a, a legion and a nyx here no even if three of you were together you should not be trying to fight 3v5 you don't know where the enemy heroes are so you guys should not engage this whatsoever but fortunately the enemy team is nowhere near so as you guys decide to blindly commit on the medusa it's going to work out uh, except for you you're going to be killed instantly this this is why Dazzle should not show himself and you should be really far back. Do you think you contribute much damage to the Medusa right now? No, not really. Poison Touch, this is the cast range of Poison Touch, okay? So if you wanted to Poison Touch, Zach, I gotta help Hex. You could do it from back here. You could do it from under the tower. You could Poison Touch and immediately back away because you'll still be in range for Shallow Grave on the OD when he is the target of the Nyx Assassin instead of you. You guys just killed Medusa and Ricky's close to respawning so you can play aggressive. You can go set up for Ro my guy, my guy. Please, Roshan, high ground. There's a there's a lot of observers we could place. Think about it. My guy, Dazzle. Dazzle. This the map became like 40% larger as we increased the sides, these jungles that were never there. The map is massive now. There are there's whole worlds to explore out there besides this cliff. Just just try any of them. Just try any other spot besides this, especially after like six different observers have died on this exact spot. It doesn't mean this spot is good. It just means you guys keep putting observers here. So just, just try somewhere else on the map. Let's break down another fight. So Lena is gonna just walk past an undying for, for whatever reason. She's just, she's just gonna walk out. Uh, we could commit a stun. We're not going to. We could Ravage to kill the mid Lena on her own. We're not. Uh, we're going to wait for the BKB to come out and then Ravage. Apparently, Medusa over here on her own. I don't know what she's doing over here. I suppose Lena was trying to connect her. Now it's maybe... Is that making sense? I'm not sure. Your positioning, currently good. Drop a sentry, please. Uh, it's about to deliver on this courier. Go ahead and drop it as this fight breaks out. We're going to astral the Medusa ahead of time uh, instead of focusing her, baiting out the stone gaze, and then using astral. Okay. Uh, refresher has been popped on Tidehunter. Turns out he doesn't have enough mana to use all his abilities because he does not have all his slots filled because he has a gem which he really needs to pass over and then honestly this vlad's really should have been built by a support potentially instead of just building items that only help him the support support could support his team with any of those items okay we're not doing that crimson actually would be super sick at this point we're not going to finish that ever uh he needs more mana he cannot use all his abilities lincoln's hex either of them would solve that give him more utility whatever okay medusa has now popped stone gaze we're going to just look at her we're all going to look at Medusa Stone Gaze. We're not going to look away from Medusa Stone Gaze. We're going to look at Medusa Stone Gaze. Get Stone Gazed twice. Now we're going to look. Again, we have burned all the mana from Medusa through a lot of effort. Through two Stone Gazes, we have burned almost all her mana. And now we will switch targets to a different hero away from the Medusa after burning all this mana. We will switch targets, and believe it or not, it's going to allow Medusa to get away. We kill some other heroes instead. It's like kind of where oh, Ravage now, guys. I have enough. Oh shit, we're all leaving. Okay, okay, never mind. Your team's doing Roche. You're showing the mid lane alone. Now, fortunately, you actually do see Nyx because when you have deep wards that are alive, it may provide you the information to know when you can safely do this or not. So this kind of stuff is pretty nifty when we don't place them all over here. Good stuff, let's do more of this. 
less of this. You still don't know where Legion is, though, so you still shouldn't be up here. At, at this late stage of the game, right, many of the cores could just, like, instantly kill you. Uh, so if you do want to push out waves, you should just, like, do it from Fog of War, right? Like, you don't need to be attacking these creeps. Be back here with your massive cast range and just nuke them with your spells. It doesn't show you on the map. So that would be a lot safer for you uh, rather than doing this, especially as the Roshan Roar globally, they, they all know no one's behind you. So this is extremely dangerous from you, unpunished. Nyx tried to steal the Aegis, dies. You guys are going to push up. This ward sucks. What are you going to see from this, guys? You're going to push up to here and you're be like, oh my god, the wraparound. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I don't know where they are anymore. I don't have any vision here. Oh my god, they got me, right? Like... Please, this one was better. You don't need this one. This is like so far back from what you're about to do at this point. You can use it anywhere like around here. You've taken the tower, so you can put observers right here, which will be difficult for the enemy to deward. You're probably gonna lose it pretty quickly after the siege, but it will help you with this siege. So like over here would be good, or like further here to see like the wraparounds, put sentries in there too, to see like Nick's coming around the edge. This will not help you at all. Anyways, now let's siege a new high ground. This one, open? No, 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 we liked the challenge of the last one let's come to the mid lane and repeat what we did before everything we described before still doable this is not quite what i meant when od could use the meteor hammer on the towers i mean i this this is literally the meteor hammer on the tower but it does not need to be the center of the meteor hammer on the tower you can in fact do it from further back away just the edge of the meteor needs to clip the tower but by the way you need creeps for that to work ravage We can't, the creeps, there's a back door. We just popped BKB, lost three fourths of OD's health. We used grave so that we could meteor hammer a tower that has back door protect the, the shield, the shield guys by the tower's health bar. It means back door is up. If you look at the map, there's no creeps anywhere in this vicinity which means even if you wipe the entire enemy team right now you cannot take these buildings and it becomes a bit of a meaningless team fight which at this stage okay is a little dead they'll be dead long enough you could eventually push it and get it but like you don't need the extra challenge the game is hard enough here at 60 minutes clearly showing it's not been an easy game you don't need to give yourselves extra challenges bkb down we still ravage initiate you actually catch like five okay pretty good everyone everyone stunned up let's kill crystal maiden okay why not kill crystal maiden okay refresher second ravage there we go because we have leveled up enough we just have enough mana for two ravages we can't use like any of other our abilities can't use our shivas because we're still carrying the gem and still backpacking the vlads okay we've killed a crystal maiden We've done the unconventional BKB pop, even when Aegis is still available. We have a backpack Lincolns, because we want move speed as a hero who has two mobility spells. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Brain processing for a moment. Brain processing. Okay, let's keep going. I'm not going to hit the Medusa. It took, it took two seconds to figure that out. Not the Medusa with Stone Gate. Not the Medusa. Any other target? Yes, any other target. Nyx. Okay, the rest of the team being zoned off. Creeps coming in. I'd like, I'd just like to clarify everyone. This, this is a building. These are buildings. Okay, with that out of the way, let's continue. Let's chase the Nyx. Oh no, no BKB anymore because I already used it. No, no detection for the Invis hero up here because believe it or not, it's back here. And my guy actually placed a sentry this time. Let's go. We're learning 60 minutes in. So the detection is back here. The gem is back here. So choosing to target the Invis hero all the way over here, not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not the choice. It's not the greatest choice. It is a choice. It's a choice. It's not, it's not the game winning choice. We're back here. We're being stunned up. We've been stone gazed all the way back here. Oh my God. I'm dead. I'm dead. Dazzle, why didn't you grave me? Dazzle, why didn't you grave him? Why didn't you grave him? Can you guys believe that the Dazzle who's back here? Looking at his teammates here, did not grave the Ricky diving back here. You maybe could have graved him. You actually, you might have the cast range, and especially if you have a blink, you maybe could have saved the Ricky. It is still Ricky's fault for, for doing this. Let's just be clear, okay? Let's sass out of the way. Ricky, terrible choice here. You 
maybe could save him. If you bought a blink and then like you could get over here, save him. Uh, it's, it's like maybe possible. I understand though that you are probably focused on this. There's only so much you can do. Undying, my guy, Undying, with almost 500 strength. Do you understand how good Vanguard into Crimson Guard could be for you right now? It could finally be one item. No, okay, my bad. Arcane Boots does help your team. Second item to actually help your team. Crimson Guard with 500 strength. Do you know how much damage you would be blocking versus the Medusa to help save your allies instead of just yourself? With over 10,000 health, you are being completely ignored because you are tanky, but you do not do anything else. Please buy some utility for your team. This is excessive overkill on survivability. A tide's gonna join in. They're both gonna jump together. They're both gonna be AOE stunned, believe it or not. And uh, this is what we wanna do. We wanna dive the tier threes, the tier fours, when like Medusa and buildings are like over here. We wanna dive. Okay, we wanna dive. We're gonna keep going. Believe it or not, Dazzle actually gets the grave off, but I'd like to highlight how bad positioning Dazzle is now in because he had to do this. It's not Dazzle's fault. It's Ricky and Tidehunter's fault. Would it not be so much easier to simply hit the buildings back here and Dazzle could grave from a safe spot? Instead, he's all the way up here under enemy buildings, under enemy vision. He should be the target of the duel. Instead, he's not. Legion is looking at the Ricky, so the grave does come out. Good work, Dazzle. You should not have had to do this. It should not be on you to risk your life. It should be the cores not doing this shit. They should be over here hitting the freaking buildings, over here hitting the open barracks. Take this stuff so that your supports do not have to dive this far into the enemy base. This is super bad, and it is not Dazzle's fault. Where's my Dazzle? Why isn't he grave saving me? It's because your Dazzle's over here. He's over here dying to the Medusa. And this is where your itemization could help a little bit. Nice, nice dodge here. This is why I do think Blink is pretty nice here to like give you a lot of mobility, get to the fights you need. Um, but yeah, it turns out when Dazzle needs to walk through the enemy Medusa to grave you back here, it's it's pretty difficult to do that. So at least to a fight like this where now everyone's really low getting killed. Dazzle, where's my Dazzle? Okay, Dazzle actually came back to help grave. You probably you probably should have graved the Undying rather than the Ricky who's already out. But you know what? Ricky's probably the guy raging, so I get it. Now let's all just leave. Let's all leave, but another high ground fight kind of thrown. I don't love this particular location, but the reason deep wards in general are important is to see stuff like this, Legion, Picked up a Shadow Blade just now, a freshly acquired Shadow Blade, and where she go, Invis? Back here. So we know there's an Invis Legion walking in this direction. Should we engage or should we get out? Depends how many heroes you have, depends all that, right? But if you're not going, going to engage, you at least need to know Legion is in this area looking for a duel, which then makes this choice by OD to come farm this creep wave out here while his team is over here. This is absolute insanity. There's no need to kill these creeps. You can kill them when they're back here, when you're under your own tier three. He's going to walk out versus an Invis Nyx, a Legion who now has Invis and a Blink Dagger and multiple heroes who are missing. He's gonna walk out here alone without any detection to farm these creeps. These are not important creeps to get. He lives for a little bit and then he's like, yeah, I'll engage the Medusa. Believe it or not, believe it or not, getting caught out here and killed. This ain't so great. Dazzle. Why didn't you grave him, Dazzle? Why why are you out here, Dazzle? Why didn't you grave him? Why are you actually out here? This is not good either. But this is not your fault. OD chose to walk out here. Horrible idea. But this is the reality of pub games. This kind of stuff will happen. Dazzle, you should just follow behind cores. It will, it's not good play from the OD for doing this, but you will at least be in the area to save him when he makes a terrible choice like this. Did you know, guys, when you ravage and separate the enemy team from their carry, and their carry is now under your base, double ravaged, everyone hitting her, and when you burn all the Medusa's mana and continue to hit her, oh my god, she could die. And now Medusa's dead. The rest of the fight's much easier. You are still a lot closer than you need to be. There you go. You backed up a little bit, right? And now you can just run and chase enemy heroes and kill them. This is all great stuff. Unfortunately, like some people get away, but whatever. You get some kills. Dazzle, please just, just, just de-ward it. You're checking if they have put an observer. That's fine. 
you can check the same spots repeatedly, especially if the enemy keeps putting there. But please, there's no observer here. You don't have to have vision here. The fact that there's a sentry here this late in the game shows that they are still checking this area. So we really should, we should really, really just consider another spot for one of these observers. I know you have three. So like if you lose one, probably not the end of the world. But we might as well choose an area that is not super likely to be lost. Dazzle, dazzle, dazzle. Anyways, we're going to push up to the tower. It's late into the game. Ricky has 400 damage. Okay, Ricky not usually a great tower hitter, but believe it or not, 66 minutes into the game, he will kill towers. There's three dead. He does, he does not, he does not need, he does not need Crystal Maiden. I know she has no buyback, so killing her is huge. But if the enemy needs to defend and commit buybacks, and there's perhaps a Legion duel to maybe lock down a certain core hero, perhaps back here would not be the best fight for us to take. The building, the building, Dazzle Grave way back here. I know they kill, I know they. it works this time guys, but in many other games, it's just, it's not gonna work and it's totally unnecessary. They could just, they could just take the buildings. Okay, hey, whatever we got the kill, just hit the buildings. Dazzle, two observers, two set. Just place one down. You can, you have two. You can even keep one to put on this cliff again once it gets dewarded, but you should at least place one for this clearly very important push late into the game. It could decide everything. Put the observer down. Hit the buildings. Why are you standing next to them? How are you going to grave them if they AOE stun you? If they suddenly all buy back, you are next to them. I want to contribute. They're all dead. That's fine. Do it from back here. Your attack range is long enough. Do not put yourself here. Stand here. Okay, anyways, we're going to take these buildings. We're going to hit them. Great. Awesome. Medusa is going to pop stone gaze and you all turn to look at her. I don't know if any of you have heard of the mythological creature known as Medusa. The lore of the heroes do not always connect to the video game, but this one is pretty accurate. When Stone Gaze is active, you should not all target Medusa. Some would say this is the worst time to target Medusa. This, it's, go back to the lore. Medusa was not known as a creature you look to. So the fact that you all choose to chase the Medusa under the tier fours and you all get stone gazed and you like keep turning in circles to build up stone gaze duration. So when you finally meet the grave, you get stone gazed. Can't say I'm surprised this fight didn't work out. She could have stone gazed. We all back away, wait for Odie to rejoin and five of us could have fought three of them with no stone gaze, but instead, here we are. You somehow survive that. They're now gonna death push down here. So you guys just gotta chill, a double fortify. You'll be okay. Ricky might have to buy back. You'll lose one set at most and then you'll be okay. This is not the time for you to walk out here and place a sentry, a sentry which you have Aether Lens extra cast range for. You could place this from the high ground if you wanted to, but it is still an unnecessary sentry considering you have fed two gems to the enemy team this is not the sentry placement, and this is certainly not the time to place the sentry as the backline save hero face first into the enemy team, Legion and Nyx both alive. Fortunately, you don't even die. You don't even die here because he hexes the Nyx and then you manage to grave yourself and you get out. Guess what? You don't have Grave now to save this OD, but fortunately double Ravage. So I, you guys kind of live here, but I mean, you end up dying. You gotta buy back, dude. Ricky bought back. This is the defense. OD, this guy does not have buyback. You can't wait for them. You gotta commit here, but you kind of don't. You're just waiting. Ricky's in 1v4. Yeah, you could buy back. You could save this guy any moment now. You're not gonna win without the Ricky. They're gonna like dive 2v4, they're out here. They somehow kill the Knicks, cause I don't know what the enemy team is doing. At any moment we could buy, Medusa's just going at it. Okay, now we're gonna chase Ricky. 
what is going on turns out we just needed to hit the buildings guys we're on it now now you commit the buyback could have been pretty late like fortunately ricky never died but there were some dicey moments and you really should just buy back earlier uh we're gonna go for the lena we're gonna go for the lena stone gaze separating everyone at this point it doesn't even matter guys like we've made so many mistakes up to this point so now Ricky's dead. Now we're back here. Now we just lose. You made your mistakes. They made their mistakes. Everyone made tons of mistakes. We focused more on yours because, I mean, you're the topic of the video, but everyone can lose the game. In this case, I don't think it was on you, so don't worry about what your teammates were saying, but do try to improve on some of the stuff we talked about. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below with the information you see here if you want to be in one of the next episodes, and I'll see you there.